Greetings, greetings everyone, and welcome to R. Kelly Appeal TV. Here we discuss the topics of Robert Sylvester Kelly and his court case with um, what's going on in the state trial coming up, upcoming appeals, and we welcome you here tonight. Tonight we are discussing a few topics that I feel is vital to the R. Kelly Appeal TV channel while we wait for the appeal updates. And so tonight we're going to talk about Belief in Self card set number nine, which is the final card set in the third suit of the Universal Messaging Oracle program that was created in 2011 from my own personal spiritual journey to awareness of self. And we're going to be moving into the metaphorical suit while we wait for appeal processes. So I hope everybody is doing absolutely wonderful. Happy holiday for those who celebrate. Happy Hanukkah, happy Kwanzaa, happy universal practice, whatever you vibe on. I welcome you and, um, and happy holiday for that. Um, so as we talk tonight, there are a few things I want to share with you. I definitely want to share with you an article about R. Kelly in the 90s and what he said about Denzel Washington, you know, watching a movie. I think it was Hurricane that changed his entire perspective of, you know, being who he wanted to be. And remember, when we were talking about the belief in self uh, suit, probably card number three or four, we decided that um, there are different practices that you have to do in order to believe in yourself. So remember I told you that there are times that we're going to have seeds planted in our mind and we don't even know where we got the idea or the, the belief in it, but somehow or another we just become that, okay? And so this is a good example of what I meant by the seeds that were planted in Robert's mind in 2008 really truly affected his perspective, even though he ignored it and he continued to move forward in his success. This article tonight is going to be a great rendition to what I'm talking about in that belief in self suit. So, you know, again, we're waiting on the dock it to move not too much is going on just some back and forth you know um soon there will be i want to say by january the 5th there will be something on the docket of what um post-trial motion filing should be submitted it should be submitted by that time because it needs to be submitted prior to going to sentencing so February 23rd is very, very close, as I said yesterday. So moving into the change of believing in oneself, you know, um, we talk about the happy energy, the energy that makes us say we've completed a cycle. We have emerged and we have grown. We've gone through the processing, just like this winter blizzard and this hurt, this, this, you know, uh, Mother Nature's hurricane of ice and snow and all of that that's going on with us. Many of us are being backtracked as far as trying to get home for holidays, getting, you know, frozen out. Some people have lost electricity. We're going through a process now. And so this process is going to build character. It's going to build, especially when we come out of it. Now, as we're going through it, yeah, that is the best time to have our internal belief system to where we know what we're feeling and we don't change from that feeling. And so Robert Sylvester Kelly is going through that same phase, except for his is incarceration. His is, you know, in the institution. So there's a lot of things that's going on that he has no control over. Just like we have no control over, you know, planes not being able to fly due to winter blizzard whiteouts and all that other stuff. You know, these are all natural aspects of change. 
And so we have to learn to understand and appreciate that and participate in the change. How many of us participate in our life changes or are we just victimized? Woe is me. I can't believe this happened to me. You know, the more we hold on to gratitude as an attitude, the more the change will transition the way we want it to. And that is the concept of believing in self, you know, and nine is a rebirth number. So in nine being a rebirth number, it's going to make us look at our thought processes, see why we think that way, how we balance our wrongs with good, you know, how many times have we said to ourselves, well, you know, I got caught up in this, you know, most high God, whoever we pray to, if you help me out of this situation this time, I promise I'm going to do better the next time. That's believing in yourself in the process of, um, we have to deal with the transitional change. And I think we are, when we're speaking that in the midst of the storm, then that saying that we're looking for hope, but at the other end or at the end of that situation. So by saying that, a lot of people feel that, you know, that's a way of saying, help me out of this. I will do better. It's kind of like a bargaining tool. Well, who says we can't bargain with our, our higher being? Who says that we cannot negotiate, you know, changes in transitional functions? We can do that, you know? Um, so it's balancing our wrongs with the good that we do when we look forward to our future efforts. And that's what I think Robert is doing right now. Letting the world drop off of him. He's letting everything go so that he can then in his own world balance his wrongs with good, hold no animosity whatsoever. And that's a very good thing because when we can literally hold no animosity or hold no, you know, disrespect or disregard to someone who has done us wrong, we're healing ourselves. And then that healing change is definitely going to take place. So then there is a positive positive to this end card. Because stability is just stabilizing the thought that, you know, whoa, what the hell is going on in my life right now? And this happens in birth. This happens in um, the transition of graduations and and elevating to another level in life. This this stability is, is about our emotional states with any new change in our life. And we're going to constantly go through those changing cycles. So... Stability is just like balancing that and saying, I can do this, but you don't know how the end, how it's going to come out. But then you end up going from stability to putting on that armor, you know, putting on that armor of processing and making sure that we are going to build ourselves up you know, building it into the, from stability to belief in self. Um, and our second, our, then, you know, after we get it from this stability balance and we are emotionally in tune with what is going on with our lives, we recognize that there needs to be some changes. Then comes the realms of enforcement. We're putting on that armor. We're putting on that protection. We're building our spiritual strength. We're building our physical strength. We're making better decisions for ourselves. And then it moves into the believing in who we are. The belief in who we are is the set self suit. Belief in self is the suit in which we wear um, beyond the the realms of enforcement. That suit is just there to enforce what it is we believe. Now we take it out and we say, this is what I spiritually know. This is what I intend to do with my life. And this is where we move into consciousness. We move into the awareness of who we are becoming. And, and we look back at some of our um, completions and we say, dang, 
you know, I graduated already. How did I do that? Like, even in a sleep state, you could do great things if you put your mind to it. Like, my daughter is getting ready to graduate with an associate's degree in business administration and human resources, and she wants to go further and move into a four-year degree now, um, probably a dual, you know, a dual associate's or associate bachelor, you know, and, and like I told her, she's like, I can't believe it's over. And that's the same thing that happened to me. When I walked across that stage to get my bachelor's degree, I'm like, well, what do I do at the time that I don't have to go to college anymore? <laughs> I needed something to do with my time to make myself, you know, realize that the, that the belief in myself that I had for this part of my life was complete. And so this is where we look at what we amplify in our world. What are we going to do now? Because for every journey, there is a process of begin, beginning and a process of completion. So we don't have to, once the, once the project has been completed, we move to the next project. Guaranteed there will be another and new project. So we're constantly in change cycle. If we can recognize and fulfill the mission of knowing that even with this happening to Robert Sylvester Kelly, this is not the end. There will be another transitional change that will make him grow even stronger, even greater in another area or aspect or phenomena that will take place, not just in his life, in our life as well. So our mood is going to twist with time. Sometimes we're going to feel so sad. We're going to be back at the stability suit level where we're just trying to get a hold, catch a, catch a glimpse of what we're emotionally even feeling at that moment. Sometimes we have to wear that armor of protection in the realms of enforcement and say, no, I'm not going back here. I'm not going back to this addictive attitude. I'm going to keep moving forward because I do have belief in myself. And see, moving into this, the next suit, metaphorical, we're going to talk about what metaphorical is all about. It's just like moving into the meta, meta attribute of just reinforcing yourself into going and getting that kryptonite, that, 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 that essential beingness of who you are and you know who you are. And it's similar to what the ego does in the physical realm, but it's greater than the ego because the ego lies to us. The ego tells us that, you know, this is what it is. But when we get that stability of our emotion, we realize it's not what it was, you know? So emotionally, we are going to be tested when we complete a cycle and that will help us finalize the test, just like what's going to happen with Robert Sylvester Kelly when he finalizes this part of his life and recognize it by letting it go and realizing that he's completed a process. See, and time is all about that processing, um, waiting on the appeal process that is processing that is going along with the cycle and allowing it to manifest what it will to complete the journey to understand the lesson more like job in the bible when being tested so much you know there's a process to it you know but we do we get back everything plus more if we continue to ascend higher in the process of knowing that things are going to change in our lives so that whole belief in self suit is a, a very vital and important part of the lesson that we gain um, in just knowing who we are becoming. So what do you feel, Kelly Nation, before we get into this one article that I want to read to you? And I ran into it when I was looking up. I had a post out there. And somebody mentioned, you know, after Denzel Washington said what he said about R. Kelly, you know, she stopped really caring about Denzel Washington. She got really uh, emotional. So when she said that, I went and I started researching, well, what did Denzel Washington say 
um, about R. Kelly, I couldn't come up with anything, but this is what I did find. And I think it's going to be great for Kelly Nation tonight. So how is everyone actually feeling? You know, are you believing in yourself? Have you had an experience recently that allows you to know that you've changed? Even listening to the belief in self suits, um, car sets from one to nine, there has to be some transitional beliefs that have come up. You know, there has to be. Kelly Nation, I also want to define for you what metaphorical What does it mean? Metaphorical suit. You know, we put on these different suits. So now you have this powerful belief in the oneself. And that belief is so powerful and so strong because it's beyond what the ego has lied to us about. This is more hard work, determination, coming to understand and so now when you take a metaphor, you use something as something symbolic. So the metaphorical suit is going to invoke a something symbolic that represents the journey. Something like a date, like for me, in my case, it was my death date and my, and my renewal date is March 23rd, 2011. And that was my, my recovery date. That's what makes me feel that I have put on the whole belief in self to move into the metaphorical world or realm within my own mindset to say that I can do greater things than what I was doing back in the day. Being accountable, being responsible, being you know, making sure that I understand, you know, a metaphorical example is life is a highway. You know, you can ride it smoothly or you can ride it bumpy. You could go down the bumpy path and tear up your vehicle, have to get new brakes, a new whole, you know, suspension system, or you could take that pathway that's so much greater. That's the metaphorical suit and what it stands for. And we find these suits, we find the metaphors in so many different things. And it's just subliminal messages that we tell ourselves when we start believing in who we are after we have gotten control of our emotions through stability we move into that realm where we can use metaphors to recognize those signs and symbols because we're truly awake. Kelly Nation, our Kelly is truly awake. So yeah, we're going to talk about that soon. And um, that's where I wanted to go with that, to just introduce you to the metaphorical suit. So we're going to, we have, I think, nine cards in the metaphors and the metaphors are going to reflect, you know, how the journey processes and how we're able to say, hmm, I understand that when I went, you know, I will never forget when I was going through my conscious awareness journey and I was like, dang, I woke up to a whole unstable world. And then I said to myself, I'm going to start going through nature. I'm going to take myself through the nature path. I started seeing things that I never saw before because I slowed my life down and I started connecting metaphors and subliminal messages and things that I put into my life path. I started to see those things and they were very consciously clear exactly as I wanted them to be in my life. And that's where I can't wait for Robert to get to because that is part of the journey 
after you believe in yourself, you start playing with the symbols and it's amazing. It's simply amazing. So back to the article. I want you to listen to this and and give me your thoughts. This was from 107.9 and it does not have a date, but it was posted by Tropicana. And let me see here. Let's listen. R. Kelly says that Denzel Washington movie changed his life. R. Ra was about to call it quits from the music industry in 1998. Despite the mega success R. Kelly had experienced with sales of more than 38.5 million albums in the U.S. and 54 million abroad, making him the most successful R&B musician of the 1990s. R. Kelly released some surprising facts on himself when he spoke to Vibe magazine earlier this month, including the fact that he was so depressed in 1998 after listening to people around him. He was about to walk away from music altogether. So glad he didn't. I was dealing with serious management problems. I was at that position in that part of my career where I was being threatened to be left by my team said the 46-year-old crooner, who has been referred to as one of the greatest songwriters of the 21st century. I was told if I didn't do what I was told to do that I would never sing again, or that I would be blackballed from the music industry, Kelly said. I was actually believing some of that stuff, hard to swallow from the man who penned the words to the celebrated anthem, I believe I can't fly right but one never knows where their inspiration will come from or what form it will take, as Kelly shares here. I really got inspired by the film The Hurricane. I went into the studio and started working on new music for Tminis Tfokum and later The Chocolate Factory Sit. I just said, you know what? I'm not going nowhere no matter who I'm with. Whatever this gift is if lives within me. This summer, Kelly releases his 12th studio album, Black Panties. And before you go getting any ideas, the man says he himself is the inspiration behind this music. Listen below to our Kelly being featured on Twista's debut single from his upcoming summer release, The Dark Horse. Okay, so that article to me, I think is very needed in the R. Kelly appeal tv for historical purposes he was about to quit music in 1998 now to me i sat back after i list, you know read the article and i said to myself now in a way i wish part of me wishes that he had have stopped in 98 and just not even fulfilled his dream of music to the level of being R. Kelly and went on and done something like in this local community, in this local area, I bet you he probably would not have ended up the way that he did right now, where he is right now. Um, if, he, if we had not have ever known Robert Sylvester Kelly or R. Kelly as we know him today, would he have gotten into the trouble he did. Kelly Nation, put that in the chat and let me know what your thoughts are on that. You know, everyone's sitting here judging him now that he's done, you know, all that he's done, despite the mega success of R. Kelly, that he experienced sales of more than 38.5 million albums in the U.S. and 54 million I, um, albums abroad, making him the most successful R&B musician of the 1990s. And someone had a nerve to put in the chat yesterday or the other day, why are we over glorifying this musician? Because this musician had a lot that he performed, that he did in the world. And he's very, very critical to our music culture. Why wouldn't we have something to say about him being judged in the way that he's being judged? You know, I'm going to have another 
um, segment, another podcast that is going to share the connection to Malcolm X's killers and how these killers were, were judged by the federal government, indicted, sentenced, convicted, and appealed. And now both people were who were wrongfully convicted is now with the Innocence Project about to get $36 million. So you can't tell me the criminal justice system does not infiltrate just to get someone, anyone. Everyone is at risk. So Kelly Nation, my theory is this. I will be going over that with the Malcolm X conversation and that's coming up. But R. Kelly released some surprising facts on himself when he spoke to Vibe in this magazine article that he was depressed in 1998. Now, you know, after listening to people around him, he was about to walk away from music altogether. That's amazing. And I wonder, you know, he said it before he wouldn't change a thing. He would do it all over again. So I would have to say that if it makes him happy, I'm I'm 100% there with him. And I'm sure we would all be. But um, he was dealing with some serious management problems too. He mentioned that as well. He was at that position in his part of his career where he was being threatened to be be left by his team. So he was at that point where he was just like, well, are you going to stay with me or are you going to go? What's going on? He was 46. Well, wait a minute. So during this article, he was 46 years old. And at that time, he was referred to as one of the greatest songwriters of the 21st century. R. Kelly was told that if he didn't do what he was told to do, that he would never sing again. And then came the issue with his voice and having to go and get voice surgery. Um, or that he would be blackballed from the music industry. I was actually believing some of that stuff, see? And it became. You believe it? Long enough, it becomes reality. Hard to swallow from the man who penned the words to the celebrated anthem, I Believe I Can Fly. They wanted to bring him down. They wanted to manipulate him and take away his freedom of expression through his music by doing everything that they could to make him look different than what his music was portraying. You know, and that was something. He says, I really got inspired by the film, The Hurricane. I went into the studio and started working on new music for TP2.com. So it didn't matter what was going on psychologically, physically. He was in the realm of, let me just go make this music. Let me do some, the next best thing. And again, the belief in self is saying that when it's complete, it's over. You know, now this is, was even before 2008. You know, this was before 2008, before the trials and everything. So he started working on new music for TP2.com and then Chocolate Factory. He just got to the point where he says, you know what? I'm not going nowhere. No matter who I am with, no matter who who's going to leave me, no matter who's going to forsake me, I'm going to keep it moving. That's straight belief in self. He was changing then. Whatever this gift is, it lives within me. So no one's going to take it from me. That's what he said back then. This summer, um, during this article, um, Kelly released his 12th studio album, Black Panties. And before you go getting any ideas, R. Kelly says he himself is the inspiration behind this music. So, you know, there was a lot of people that 
were really still riding with him, still rolling with him, you know. And so, like I said yesterday, you know, he's incarcerated right now. I hope he's making the best of it wherever he is, whatever he is doing at this time. I hope he's going into his completion of believing in himself so that he can move to a higher level to where he can begin to see metaphors from within himself and his higher power show up in his life so that then at that point, he's able to say that this is crucial, this is critical, and I make I made it through. No one no one gave me the the you know the attribute to do this or direction to do this. I did this from my own. It's about freedom. It's about positive thinking. It's about elevating and and using that energy to become even more self-aware about being recalling what really went on so you can get an understanding internally so you can list the beliefs of why you believe what you believe and how you begin to grow and what your energy truths really are and the verification of how you metaphorically brought peace and tranquility and joy and movement forward into your life that's what metaphorical is all about i mean and it goes deep kelly nation it goes deep and I hope we're really taking the time to register this information you know why because we're always going to need it somewhere somehow this information I'm sharing with you is going to help you elevate when you go through your life situation because we're all going to have one and I mean to have a platform or a blueprint this is how I was able to awaken and say, let me jot this down in case I ever need it again, which I will need it again because I have already needed it even after my situation was over. And I'm using it for Robert Sylvester Kelly's situation right now. And it goes to show you how important and valuable this information is. So that's what I wanted to share with you, Kelly Nation, tonight. I thank you so much for you know, being a part of the Appeal TV channel. Um, I will be coming back on in a couple days. Uh, look out for the live premiere or uh, the live itself um, where we're going to talk about the history behind the Malcolm X uh, murders and how these men were exonerated through the Innocence Project. Um, I'm in the process of trying to, you know, well, working to get the Innocence Project started in relation to Robert Sylvester Kelly. However, I have to wait until after the appeal has been granted and done because the Innocence Project will not pick anything up until after, you know, appeals have been finalized. So that is something that I am getting ready to gear myself up to do. Um, we signed some petitions yesterday with uh, a group that I'm in. And it's to, she needed four signatures. Um, I want to get the name of this group. Very powerful, loving group. Um... Let me see here. Our Kelly friends, fans, and family, the King of Robert Sylvester Kelly. Um, that is the uh, name of the group. And I want to say the administrator's name is Mackenzie. Mackenzie so please join that group um, and the signature that we signed was a petition to boycott lifetime and they asked us to, pr to please share um, and some of the statements in the group is can you spare a minute to help this campaign petition to boycott lifetime and to please share um, I don't know if our Kelly um, understands what he's going through right now. I pray that he does get his freedom. 
Good morning, Robert Sylvester Kelly. God will save you and help you to be free from all the bad people. God bless you every day and night. So people are still moving. Um, the fans of R. Kelly, please help out the R&B King, singer of the world, with some finance. Y'all show some love, just like he showed us love, kings and queens. Um, and if we are putting things on the on his books to suffice, you know, what he's needing, you know, I still say the same thing. He's at the MCC in Chicago. Um, that's where all money should go. And let me see. So, yeah, yeah, there's, there's a lot of stuff, you know, happening, um, when we look at some of the um, the groups that still have R. Kelly, especially for the love of R. Kelly. Um, just recently, happy holidays to my R. Kelly fans. Um, and Merry Christmas to all of my Yo, fans. Yo, what up, Chatown? I'm chilling in the studio, and I just want to wish everybody a Merry Christmas. This is for y'all, GCI. It's the time of the year to celebrate This miraculous, exciting Christmas day People loving one another around the world And there's a present for every boy and girl Well, if Rudolph had his nose so bright that day Tell me why can't we spend our Christmas this way? Yeah. Oh, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Oh, Merry Christmas. To Now what a lovely way to start the season right yeah. By you giving me your heart on Christmas night I will treasure every moment with love For this day which I've always dreamed of Well if Frosty had some magic in his life Tell me why can't we spend our Christmas on this night? Oh, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Oh, Merry Christmas to you. Oh, Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas, oh, Merry Christmas to you. In the rock. <laughs> Thank you, Ari Kelly. Thank you. See, his music is just so powerful. You know, um, man, man, free R. Kelly, free R. Kelly. That's what I'm hearing. That's what I'm hearing. And then we had Timothy, who's going to have the, the, um, he did his, uh, um, marathon to Trapped in the Closet. So that's what he was doing on Christmas Day, Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, you know, and it's just, you know, it's just so much. I stand for R. Kelly, free R. Kelly, free R. Kelly. He deserves his due process. Oh, my God. So powerful. So powerful. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah. So when we go, you know, R. Kelly wins appeal 2002, um, to 2022, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I, I just look at some of the, you know, come and join this new group from positive news and messages from R. Kelly. 
McKenzie. Okay, it's called Solar Coaster, and people are joining that group. Um, you know, again, I just say that no matter where you go, make sure when you send your money, you send it specifically to MCC. Um, that whole unofficial album, crazy, very, very insane. Um, you know, and and talking about. Joycelyn Savage, if she did have a baby, then she definitely froze our Kelly sperm at one point in time and had it in a place where she could, you know, use it at a later date. What are your thoughts there? Mm -hmm. I would um, be talking about, someone asked the question, why don't I talk about other um issues going on in the world with other celebrities and different things like that because this is our kelly appeal tv if i wanted to talk about anyone else i would have named it something different but this is the focal point of specifically a focused uh genre of of uh communication and so i want to keep it that way and yeah, I know I could talk about what's going on in the world with other celebrities and the deaths and the, you know, you know, the, the guilty verdicts coming out. I, I, I see them. But at that point, if they relate to R. Kelly or Robert Sylvester Kelly, like the Malcolm X story that I'm going to be talking about next time when we do our podcast, our next live, I want to share that because the Innocence Project is connected to Robert Sylvester Kelly. So it has to connect to him in some way, shape, form, or fashion. Um, yeah, and that's what I wanted to share tonight. So with that, I thank you so much for listening, commenting, subscribing to this podcast. I hope it has been of help to you. And if it has, please join the subscribe to, to get the latest uh, podcast that we bring each Tuesday and Sunday. I try to do everything around 6 p.m. If it is a premiere or if it is a live, you will see me here um, more regularly on Tuesdays and Sundays. So, um, yeah. So I just thank you all. I hope you have a prosperous new year. 2023 is already at the door. It's knocking and it is up to us to make the decision on how we're going to expect this new year to bring us the love, the joy, the tranquility and the peace and the knowledge and awareness of what it is we're supposed to know about who we are becoming. 23 is a great number. You know, that's the number that Michael Jordan used, you know, um, it's very powerful. That number represents a lot, you know, the power to recreate, the power to reanalyze and rethink. And that's what I want us to do, Kelly Nation. This information is, I go and click on these videos and I listen to them at certain points in my time. And I said to myself, wow, that was right on point for me, for me, you know, because I see the growth in what I do. And I I believe very strongly in what I believe in. And, and I think that we all should. If we're believing in anything, it should be very, very strongly, you know, generated for us. And, and it should be working on our behalf, you know. And if it's not, then maybe it is something that needs to be transitioned and changed in our lives. So as always, keep it 100. Thank you so much for being with us. Have a wonderful, safe, prosperous, and blessed new year. And I will pop back on, but we'll see you next time.